Hi everyone, welcome to this SQ Hall for Beginners tutorial. I am Hayat Tunde and today we will learn the basics of SQL which stands for Structured Query Language. SQL is used to interact with databases, helping you create, transform and analyze data efficiently. By the end of this video, you will know how to install my SQL, write simple and intermediate queries and export your findings to platforms like Excel and Power BI. Don't worry, if you have no coding experience, we will start from the very beginning. Let's get into it. First, we need to install MySQL, a popular relational database management system. Here's how to do it. I am right here on the MySQL official download page. You can find the link in the description below. By default, the correct operating system should be selected. For me, it's Windows. Choose the version that don't say web in its name. Click on the bottom one. Click on download and then select no thanks, just start my download. Open the downloaded file. Select full for the installation type and click next. Click execute to start the installation. This might take a few minutes, so be patient. Click next through the prompt. When asked for a password, create a simple one you'll remember. Then next, 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 execute and finish the setup process by clicking finish. After you have finished installing MySQL, locate MySQL Workbench application on your computer. You can find it by searching for MySQL Workbench in your computer's search bar. Click on the MySQL Workbench icon to open the application. You should see the MySQL Workbench home screen. On the home screen, you will see an entry labeled Local Instance MySQL. Click on this Local Instance to connect to it. If prompted, enter the password you created during the MySQL installation process and click OK. Once connected, the MySQL Workbench interface will open. This is where we will write and execute our SQL queries, manage databases, and perform other SQL operations. Now that we have MySQL Workbench open and connected to our local instance, let's import a real database. In the MySQL Workbench interface, locate and click on the Create a New Schema button, which is typically found in the left-hand sidebar under the Schema tab. A new window will pop up, prompting you to name your schema. Enter University Data or any name of your choice and click Apply. Click Apply again in the next window to confirm the creation of the new schema. Then click Finish. After creating the schema, we want to import data into it. So click on the Schema tab. Right click on the table section under the newly created University Data Schema. Select Table Data Import Wizard from the context menu that appears. In the Table Data Import Wizard, click Browse to select your dataset file. You can find a sample dataset in the description below. Choose the file and click Next. Name your table Universities or a name of your choice and click Next. My SQL Workbench will show you a preview of the data. If everything looks good, click Next. The import process might take a few moments. Once the data is imported, click Finish. Now that we have successfully imported our data, we can start writing SQL queries to analyze it. So on the left hand side of my SQL workbench, you will see a list of schemas that is databases. Locate the university data schema that you created earlier. Double click on it to select it. You will know it's selected because the name will turn bold. Right click on tables under the university data schema. Select refresh all from the context menu to ensure that the new university table is visible. Now, let's write our first SQL query to see the data in the university's table. So click on the file tab and select new query tab. This is where we're going to be writing our queries. 
to view all the data in the universities table, you're going to type in this query. Select is the SK Hall keyword used to retrieve data from a database. The asterisk means select all columns from the table. This will display every column and every row from the university's table. From specifies the table from which to retrieve the data and universities is the name of the table you want to query. The semicolon at the end of the statement indicates the end of the SQL command. It tells the SQL interpreter that this is the complete command to execute. So click on the Thunderbolt icon to run the query. You should see the entire table displayed below in the results grid. Let's say your manager only wants to see the university name and the country. To do this, you would have to modify the query. Looking at the table, we have the university name column and we also have the country. So we will have the query modified to remove the asterisk, which means select all and replace that with university name and country. So type in comma to add the country column. So instead of using asterisk, which selects all columns, we specify the exact columns we want to retrieve. Again, from universities, specifies the table from which to retrieve these columns. And the semicolon indicates the end of the SQL command. So with that executed, we are now able to see only the university name and the country columns in the result grid. If your manager wants to see a list of unique countries and not have it repeated as we have it here, he can use the distinct keyword. So I will have the query amended to include the distinct keyword. Distinct is used to return only unique values and remove duplicates from the result sets. So this query will return a list of all unique values in the country column of the university's table. Execute the query to see the unique countries. We're getting an error here because I didn't remember to specify the column for which I want distinct values. So I would have my country column indicated to have that error fixed. And execute again. This is a list of all unique values in the country column of the university's table. To count the number of unique countries, I would have the command amended to include the count function. Count is an aggregate function used to count the number of rows that match a specified condition. And distinct country ensures that only unique country values are counted. This query will return the total number of unique countries in the country column. So run the query to see the total number of countries. We have six. If your manager asks for the average quality of education scores across all universities, we're going to use the average function. Looking down below here, we have all the columns available in our table and quality of education is one of the columns we have. So I would have this query amended to include the average function and the quality of education column. So replace the count function with average and the distinct country column with your quality of education column. So again, average is an aggregate function that calculates the average value of a numeric column. And quality of education, like I said, is the column for which we want to calculate the average score. This query will return the average quality of education score for all universities in the table. So execute the query to see the average quality of education score. And there you have it. Let's now learn how to filter data using the WHERE clause. To find universities located in the United States, we're going to have this column replaced with this. The code is saying, select all columns from the university tables where the country column equals United States. Again, select asterisk means select all columns. The asterisk is a wildcard character that signifies all columns. From universities specifies the table from which to retrieve the data, where it's used to filter records that meet a certain condition. 
and this specifies the condition that the country must be United States. Run the query to see the results. Only the universities in the United States will be displayed. If your manager wants to see universities in the United States as a country, but not in Cambridge as a city, you would have this query modified to this. This is the same filter query we ran earlier, except that we included this clause. So the code is saying, select all columns from the universities table where the country column equals United States and the city column does not equal Cambridge. The hand keyword of function combines multiple conditions. So both conditions must be true for the records to be included. And this specifies that the city must not be Cambridge. So let's have this query executed to see the filtered results. So this is a filtered result showing the universities in the US but excluding the city Cambridge. To filter for universities in the US, UK or Germany, we're going to use the in operator. So let's have this code modified to this. The code is saying, select all columns from the universities table where the country column is either United States, United Kingdom or Germany. In allows you to specify multiple values in a WHERE clause. So this query should return records where the country is either United States, United Kingdom or Germany. So let's run the query to see the results. And just as we expected, we have a record of universities in only Germany, United States and the UK. Let's now combine what we've learned so far to answer more complex questions. If your manager asks you, how many universities have a quality of education score above 90? You're going to use this code. I will explain this. The code is saying, count the number of universities where the quality of education column is greater than 90. If you look down below here to the left, we have a column called quality of education. So it's saying, count the number of universities from the universities table where the quality of education is greater than 90. So let's have this query executed to see the count. We have 100. To count universities by country, we're going to use the group by and the order by function. Here is the code we're going to use. The code is saying, group the universities by country, count the number of universities in each country and have the results ordered by the count in descending order. Groups rows that have the same values into summary rows. The order by sorts the result sets and this counts the number of universities for each country and labels it as university count. And we have this here to sort the count in a descending order. Let's run this query to see the countries ordered by the number of universities. So here is the result showing the countries ordered by the number of universities. If your manager only wants to see the top three countries with the most universities, add the limits to the query. The code is saying, group the universities by country, count the number of universities in each country, order the results by the count in descending order and limit the results to the top. This restricts the number of rows returned to three. So let's execute this query to see the top three countries. And there you have it. We have Canada, United Kingdom, and Australia listed as the top three countries with the most university count. After running your SQL queries and getting the desired results, click on the export button in the results section of my SQL workbench. Choose CSV or Excel format and save the file. That way you can have an Excel or CSV report of your queries. To leverage the real-time data analysis capabilities of Power BI, we can connect directly to the MySQL database and run the SQL queries from within Power BI. So launch Power BI Desktop on your computer. In Power BI, click on the Home tab, click on Get Data, and select More to see all data source options. In the search box, type MySQL and select my SQL database from the list. Click connect. You're going to get this error. Power BI needs an additional connector or driver to connect to my SQL. 
here is how you can resolve the issue. You're going to have to visit my SQL Connector or ODBC download page. I will provide the link to that in the description as well. The link will bring you here. Choose the appropriate version for your printing system. Typically, you would have this selected for Windows. So download the installer, run the installer and follow the necessary prompts. So after installation, there's a need to create an ODBC data source. Open the ODBC data source administration tool. You can search for ODBC in the startup menu. I will select the 64 bit. Go to the system DSN tab and click on hard. Select my SQL ODBC 8.4 Unicode or the ANSI driver and click finish. For data source name, you can give it this name. Description is optional, you can add something. Get the host name or the IP address of your MySQL server. You can get that by going to your MySQL database, click on the home button, right click on your instance and select edit connection. So right here you have the IP address and your username. Your password you would have to remember. So I will copy this to use as my host name or my IP address. And from here, I can confirm that my username is root. I would type in my SQL server password and select the database from the drop down list. We are using the university database. So I'll select that and click test to ensure the connection is working. If the test is successful, click OK to have it saved. Let's now go through the steps to connect Power BI to MySQL and run SQL queries. So click on the Home tab, click on Get Data and select ODBC from the list of data sources. In the ODBC window, select the DSN, that is the data source name you created earlier, which is the MySQL Power BI can either have tables imported directly or use the advanced options to write SQL queries. So it's going to be in this SQL statement box that you will type your custom SQL queries. For example, let's run this query. Click OK to run the query and load the data into Power BI. So Power BI will execute the query and show a preview of the data. Click load to import the data into Power BI. After loading the data, you will see the fields listed in the fields pane on the right. You can drag and drop the field, e.g. university name, quality of education, or country to the visualization pane to create various charts and tables. So, you can select the type of visualization you want to create from the visualization pane, e.g. the bar charts. Then drag and drop any of these fields to the visualization pane as you wish. So you can use either the bar charts, the pie charts or any other visualization you want.